Hey everybody and welcome to Chew Stream where we talk about art and life as an artist. I'm your host Bobby Chu and today it's week five of the 90 minute art challenge. This is awesome. I can't believe how fast things go when you have some consistency. So uh, you can go into, let's get into some stuff here, but before we do. Now, before we go on any further, just a reminder to subscribe to this channel so that you can find this channel again. Also hit the notification button so you'll be notified when there's a new video. Okay, so today's challenge was this image right here. We were supposed to paint this. We were supposed to paint this in 90 minutes. Now, how can you get this all down in 90 minutes? Some thoughts before we start. This photograph, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of information here. How much information do we want to put down in 90 minutes? We could try to put down all of it, but it probably won't be very accurate and probably won't be very good. Okay, we could decide to stylize it. That could definitely help. We could decide to do it in black and white. We could decide to just concentrate on a section. Okay, so those are all really good things to kind of think about as we are approaching today's workout here, today's challenge. Okay, so here are the instructions. Art challenge number five, complete an illustration in 90 minutes based on this image. Link to the image in the video details below. All right, and for those of you that have never been on the stream before, you've caught it live, or if you caught it live, this is how you can ask questions. You could go to slido.com, hashtag choose stream. You don't need an account. You don't need to sign up for anything. I don't want your credit card. You could just simply ask a question. That's what these streams are for. It's just for fun. It's just to, you know, study together, work hard, improve together, all good things. Okay. Uh, the other part about this is that we also have, I have Discord on here live right now so you can join the discord channel and ask me questions there's also a nice little community that we've started here thanks to my wonderful helper patricia uh moderating the stream she's the one that uh, has done all of the bells and whistles on the discord channel so big shouts out to her um and yeah come join us on discord okay so the last little thing, the last little thing is if you are doing this stream, which I hope you are, you can upload the, you know, you can upload your entry, your workout to, um, to Twitter, to Instagram, to whatever. And every week I want to show just a few highlights and hopefully one of them is yours okay hashtag 90 minute art challenge and all of these things the discord channel slido this they're all in the details of this video as well as uh, a link to next week's challenge okay so it's all there for us and i would love it if you could set a reminder for next week's challenge as well so you don't miss out on that one Okay, so I'm going to start off with veteran here, Mitchell Bernal, my good buddy, holy smokes, uh, Fantasia 2000, you know, various other Disney blockbusters, Mitchell Bernal right there. You got professionals uh, coming in here. That's awesome. This was the study from last week's. It's Frederick Remington's uh, Midnight um, wolf or moonlight wolf sorry all right this person Stefan Stefan Hansen or Steven sorry Steven Hansen Stefan Hansen should be Steven yeah Steven Hansen awesome holy smokes okay this was from a little while back but they were just so gorgeous all these little studies this is the kind of stuff I love to see when I'm looking at portfolios and I'm looking for artists that I want to work with right? The studies. Awesome. Progression, progression, progression. And then finally, I think, oh, okay, that's the final for that one. It's hilarious. It's so funny. And then the second one, this one was the uh, Moonlight Wolf. 
interpretation. That is awesome. That's what I'm talking about from studying, extrapolating information, and applying it to your own stuff. Evolution. Boom. Just like that. This is fantastic, too. This is by Squibble uh, Studios. This is a whole entire you know, process video yeah. and everything. And hello, Patricia. Did somebody just say something? Um, anyhow, I just want to go over these last little bits. Okay, so here's another wonderful uh, entry right here. So there is... Um, it's kind of like a wolf woman. Very, very cool. Beautiful. You know, this is another one where it's like exactly right on. They are not copying the tones, the colors exactly, but the mood interpreted in their own way. Puppy Sprout. Big shouts out to Puppy Sprout. And then Grace, same thing. Grace Oris, right on. Look at that. Look how many studies that she she did as well. You know, fantastic, fantastic. And it shows, it really shows that it paid off. And then, wow, this week, Stephen Hansen, you really just nailed it. You were everywhere on my radar this week. Just gorgeous, just gorgeous, funny, outstanding, outstanding. And the preliminary sketches as well. Wow. That's what it's all about here. Uh, so big shouts out to all those guys. And of course, I want to give some big shouts out to you guys too. Where are you guys from? Let me know and I will try to give some shout outs. Okay, so 90 minutes. Here we go. Time's ticking. We're on this. Uh, for me, when I'm looking at this subject, I am definitely thinking that it's too much information. I actually tried to do a study in color. Um, didn't work out very well. After that study, then I realized, you know what? Uh, I got a lot done, but I didn't like it. I would have rather spent time on less things than spending less time on more things. Uh, sometimes that's kind of how it is right like some people we are so busy with trying to accomplish everything we do a little bit of everything but we don't get any of it really completed well um okay so here we go we're gonna go with some questions and before we do that i want to give some shout outs so holy smokes they are coming in malaysia mel in malaysia we've got indonesia uh, Silamat, I guess, Croatia, man, Quebec, Netherlands, Serbia, Brazil, India, 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 Netherlands, India, Switzerland, Mexican, in the UK, hey, <laughs> Belgium, India, oh, Argentina, India, wow. Big shouts out to everybody in India. Oh my goodness, that's a place I would love to go one day. I hope, I hope we can get back to normal soon so I could do that. Argentina, um, what's that one? Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, uh, Wisconsin, Brazil, India, Turkey, India, 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 India. Wow, Germany, holy smokes. India unite, holy smokes. Toronto, uh, Argentina, Philippines, South Africa, Czech Republic, India, 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 Ukraine. There we go. Okay, we're back. Let's go on to the first question here. So first question, let's go to Slido. And then uh, you guys in Discord, get ready um, to ask your questions. Okay, so Han, uh, Hassan, sorry, Hassan wrote, Hi, Bobby. I've seen you were drawing manually. What slash how do you think it added to your skill set? How beneficial to have the skill of drawing manually? Well, everybody's different. Everybody is different. Peru. Oh, my gosh. The, the names keep going. And it's like it's awesome because our group keeps growing every week. But um, 
yeah, drawing traditionally, drawing digitally. I think both are so beneficial, so beneficial. Are they absolutely necessary? I'd say no, because there's always a way. You know, people that feel like they need to do everything digitally, well, you can just look at somebody like uh, Kim Jong-gi, Karl Kopinski, um, a bunch of traditional artists, right? Making their way, doing great, doing traditional art. And there's many more where that came from. Um, but my own philosophies is that I'm a searcher of knowledge. I know that I do not have enough years in my life to get all the knowledge, but there's so much awesome knowledge out there that um, I want to do my best. And I know it makes perfect sense to me. If I collect enough knowledge and I really apply the knowledge to the point where I own it, I can do it, I can use it, um, I'll become an awesome artist. I know that. It makes perfect sense. How could it not? Uh, so drawing manually versus drawing digitally, though. Drawing manually, let me tell you, drawing and painting manually is awesome. One is that you can't erase your mistakes completely. There will still be remnants of this pencil, uh, these pencil marks, right? Most likely. And painting, same thing. Once you apply that paint, how are you going to get it off? It's very difficult. Uh, you can cover things up. You can redo things. You can scrub things out, perhaps. But you know what I mean. Now, what are the benefits of this? I found myself just making more intricate marks, more thoughtful marks, when I paint or draw traditionally. And I find myself really concentrating on the mark that I'm going to make before I make it, visualizing it there, seeing, okay, is that the mark I want? Let me adjust it. Let me change my idea. Let me visualize that. Let me see if that fits. Does it fit? Okay, I'll apply it. That by itself is an awesome exercise, an awesome skill. Uh, Paul Lazane is an amazing example. Paul Lazane has worked on everything. He started, he was one of the first artists at DreamWorks. He was one of the first artists at, um, he was one of the first artists during the beginning of uh, Marvel animation, you know, the What If series. Um, Weta. Yeah, all sorts. Anyways, so he's worked on everything. He's done everything from animated films down to uh, matte paintings back in the day for uh, Dick Tracy matte paintings and stuff, traditional matte paintings. And so I asked him, because he does everything digitally now, what's the difference between your thought process? And he said when he was painting matte paintings, painting on glass, painting very large, uh, he would think about seven or eight moves ahead. First, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. Fourth step is this. Fifth step is this. Sixth step is this. Seventh step, I'm going to do this. And eighth step, perhaps, I'll do this. That's a lot of planning, a lot of stuff in your head uh, that we don't really do digitally because we have the luxury of undoing. Imagine that you did, though. Imagine you took all the benefits of traditional painting, like constantly thinking that far ahead, mixed in with the fluidity, the freedom of digital painting. You'd become a beast. You would never really stop. You would just keep going. You'd just keep painting, and your arm would practically never stop, I think. You know, if, if, if I was to do that right, I was to think seven moves ahead as I was digital painting all the time. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, why would you stop almost? <laughs> Anyways, a really great question. And, you know, it's something that you 
might not realize unless you try it yourself and do a bunch of traditional painting versus a bunch of digital painting. Um, yeah, just a little big shouts out to Noah and Mara in the chat. I see them there. They're wonderful friends, um, longtime friends. Big shout out, big shouts out to Noah in, in Israel and, and Mara in Italy. All right, let's go to the next one here. And uh, do we have a Discord question? Feel free to ask. Oh, shoot. Hold on one second. The sound is going through the wrong stuff here, and nobody will be able to hear. Um, Okay. Okay, can you try to say something again, Patricia? Hello? <laughs> Hello, okay, yes. you're there. Yes. Uh, we have a question from Errol from Indonesia. Wonderful. Hi, Errol. If you can hear me right now, I can't hear you. Oh, shoot. I think he has some mic problems. Oh, okay. Um, no problem. I can uh, ask the question for uh, for him. Sure. Yeah. Um, the question was, uh, I, um, I wonder how to transition smoothly to do stylized background painting for 2D animation while stay maintaining my other portfolio, which is realistic and somewhat grounded in illustration and concept designs. Uh, it's really just rolling up your sleeves and doing another portfolio. That's what it sounds like. If you want to transition smoothly, that's, you know, for that transition, it takes a lot of good hard work. Um, you might be able to do animated uh, backgrounds, layouts right now, environments, but nobody will know. <laughs> unless you do a bunch not just one a lot of times maybe one you know if you do one and you get a job great if you don't get a job after doing a great layout stylized animated kind of style then the thing to do is to do another one and another and another until um, until you break that wall down I, I feel like one of the biggest um, things that's helped me is I try to think about everything like Okay, when did everybody stop? Because I need to get to that point, and that's when my um, my advantage starts. That's when I start to go above the crowd, right? So it's like I will work, 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 work until I'm like, mm, yeah, I think everybody probably would have stopped by now. Okay, now is my start time. You know, try to think about it like that. Um, I don't know if that helps, but it can definitely be difficult trying to create another portfolio when you're already busy. You already got a lot of stuff to do. Also, we only have a limited amount of time. I could tell you every day I feel like I didn't have enough time to finish everything I want to do. Uh, and I'm constantly turning down stuff as well because uh, because of this you know because of this we got to be conscious of our time and are we taking on too much sometimes when we take on too much we don't actually accomplish nearly as much as if we only took on just one or two things all right oh, sorry that's <laughs> you're welcome um or my pleasure. Any other questions before we go on to some Slido question? Okay, so I'm going to go on to some Slido questions. And of course, anybody can go to Discord or Slido. And I want to also um, share something that Patricia did on the Discord channel that was awesome. I just, you know, I'm so busy. That's such 
not an excuse, but um, I haven't really looked through a lot of this stuff. And I was looking through it today and I was like, wow, this is so cool. So let me share a little bit of it. You know, in our Discord channel here, you also put all of these little hashtags, your portfolio, so people can, you know, put their portfolio and share it with everybody else. Uh, also getting comments, your art, right? So people are posting their art here, getting comments and things like that, getting... You know what I love about this, Patricia, is that everybody is giving feedback. And that's something that is greatly missed um, because before, when we used to do, when we would do these um, forums, posting on forums, it wasn't to get likes, it wasn't to get shares, it was to improve, it was to get comments, it was to get suggestions, and that's exactly what I saw you've done here uh, in our little ChewStream Discord channel. So way to go, Patricia. Uh, yeah, and now way to go everybody else because it, it's also the rest that's really helping and uh, giving great feedback. Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> yes, yes, but you you did build the home. You did build the home for everybody to hang out and uh, do stuff in. So I'm gonna give the big shout out Thank back you. to you. All right, let's go. Let's go <laughs> with the you. next question here. Uh, I want to go with a Slido question here from anonymous. I love Wesley Burt, Jason, I'm assuming this is Chan, uh, and Marco Derjevic's work. What type of, pr of art practice do you recommend to develop that kind of style? I, I would do these kind of practices, except I would do them with their art. You know, like many of these, m many of these challenges that I've been doing, this is the fifth one, of course, I would sketch, I would paint, I would study each one of those paintings or photos for around an hour each. And I would do it like six times before the seventh, uh, before the one that I actually showed on the stream. When you do that, and, oh, sorry, the key component here is that the seventh time or the final time that you do it, you are not looking at the reference anymore. You're not looking at anything. You're coming straight out of your head. And that means when you're studying, when you're copying, quote unquote copying the, the study, the subject, you'll tend to think about it differently. The whole thought process will evolve. It'll change because you're, you know later on you're going to have to do this out of your head. Right, and when you start thinking about it like that, everything changes, and you're like, mm, "Okay, um, how does this work? How would I draw this again? How would I paint this again? What are the things I need to remember? What are the things I need to understand so I can remember easier?" And slowly, slowly, you start to, or actually, seem slow. You look back after a couple of weeks, and you're like, "Wow, I really did learn a whole bunch of stuff in just a couple of weeks." Um, yeah, everything starts to absorb. It starts to absorb. And that's how I would go about it. That's what I'm doing now with my quarantine time, you know, just a heck of a lot of studying and just loving it. All right. And, of course, Wes, Jason, Marco, their style is highly anatomical. So you'll probably want to do some studies of human anatomy and same kind of thing, trying to, how can I get to the point where I can uh, draw muscles out of my head or look at a photograph and start to see all the muscles behind the skin? Same kind of thing, doing studies where you're thinking, in the end, I got to do this by myself without any reference. Okay, and if we don't have another question we'll, or on Discord, 
we'll go on to another question on Slido. Okay, so next question on Slido is uh, Anonymous asks, how do you manage working mainly at the computer without fatigue? Do you take frequent breaks or work part or partially traditionally? Now, this is an interesting question because I'm not sure why the computer is in there. Is it because you're staring at the computer and that's what's giving you fatigue? Uh, one super simple thing, okay, life hack. I don't start off with a white background. Notice that? When I start off with a gray background, it doesn't make my eyes as sore. When I'm starting off with a lower lit background, my eyes don't get as, as sore, nearly as sore. Contrast will make your eyes sore. Um, so if you lower the contrast, then you know you'll you'll be able to paint for longer. I don't even know why nobody really talks about that, but it's a thing. It's absolutely, absolutely a thing. I'm not a scientist, but I can guarantee you <laughs> that it'll help because I know I've tried it. Um, makes a lot of sense. And that's the same reason why people get so tired, so brain dead at the end of a comic convention if they're tabling especially because it's nonstop contrast everywhere. I used to talk about this with uh, friends and such, like, man, I'm just so brain dead after a day of Comic-Con talking with people. Is it talking with people? Is that the reason? Maybe. But I think a huge reason is because there's just so much to look at, so much contrast. You're just tired by the end of it. All right. Uh, here we go with another question here. But the other thing that I do to stop from fatigue, perhaps, or just slowing down, is I, I do have multiple things that I need to do. Now, I did mention, didn't I? I, I keep mentioning, focus on one thing, focus on one thing. Uh, and yet, I'm telling you, I work on multiple things throughout the day. However, when I'm working on that one thing, I am not thinking about anything else. And that's why it still pertains. You know, it still works. Um, you can do multiple things, I guess. But with severely concentrated efforts, uh, when you're working on that one thing, that's all that exists. And for me, when I start to slow down on one thing, then I'll jump to the other one. And when I jump to the other subject, the other task that I have to do, it's with fresh eyes, fresh thoughts. Sometimes you don't want to do that for certain things, like perhaps reading something. Now you got to read it all over again to see where you are. Um, but anyhow, that's what I'll, I would do and throughout my day. Once I start feeling like I'm slowing down on something, I jump onto the other thing. And right away, it's like taking a fresh look. You know exactly what you need to do. All right. So we have just about a little bit over an hour left. You can see I'm just going for a black and white study here. What I'm interested in um, studying, learning, messing around with, playing around with is really, I, I found that this image was really cool because of the overall tonal design. When I kind of squint my eyes and I kind of look at all the different values in the image, it's like most of the values are uh, lighter than 50% gray, right? Most of the values. And then you have the parts in the shadows, which are mostly, I don't know, around 50% gray, something like that, something in that vicinity. And those are the dark areas. Uh, compare that with last week. 
and then slight accents of much darker which is re really cool so overall the image tonal wise the tonal design of it it's all light tones with these little accents of dark tones like in the eyes in like um ambient occlusion shadows uh, things like that i thought that was interesting especially if you did these challenges in order this is almost like the opposite of last week right the dark tones here roughly get around 50 percent gray but the dark tones in the previous one or the light tones in the previous one got about 50 percent gray right most of them so it's a really cool contrast in subject matter i found with with the this week's stream and that's what i hope everybody will enjoy from it it's just the crazy amount of contrast all of a sudden now we're using all these light tones instead of dark tones all right uh the other little thing about this is strategy here now, I did do a bunch of different studies with this illustration. I don't have them handy with me right now, but I was really interested in the tonal kind of design of this, uh, this subject. So I went about it in different ways. I went about it in kind of like this way where I drew it and then right away I divided the image into direct shadow or direct light and indirect light areas, right? Areas in shadow. Um, then after that, I studied it another way. You know, I studied it where I was only doing ambient occlusion shadows, the really, really dark accents, right? Very, very subtle, very similar tones for everything else about like three or 4% difference for everything else and shaped everything and then went back in with an adjustment layer that had a darker version of this illustration and put in the areas that were not hit by um, direct light. Now, if you're a professional, if you're really serious about art, if you're a real serious art student, then we just really kind of geeked out about values just now in this little talk um all the all the maybe not so serious people about art probably all left by now <laughs> after that answer but there you go hey i see hello yes cj Rus soto how are you fine um yes I was hoping you had some advice for doing quick color studies. Uh, I'm doing a full-on illustration, and I would like to finish it for Thursday. And I, I it's the first time I'm doing this kind of illustration digitally. Also, the first time doing in paint, also painting it. Most of the backgrounds I've done are being pencil pencil sketches and I haven't done many of them. But I like the way the sketch is going, but I'm worried that when I start adding color it's going to it's gonna be ruined. And also I, I, I was planning to to do some little sketches to define the colors and then find a, an artist who had an illustration with the same kinds of color schemes and study that for later apply it to the Full illustration okay okay that was a long one so let me try to figure out what the question where the questions are within that um, uh, w right now it seems like you you need to fit in sh an illustration and you need to do it quickly <laughs> so you need to do these studies quickly you need to do uh, you know how to get all these things done is that just about right yes okay yes time is the only thing that um you can't really push that much 
the worst situation is when you don't have enough time. Um, the best thing that you could do is lower the bar, lower the qual, lower the perhaps not quality, but the complexity of the thing that you want to do. So if you're thinking you that it would look like an oil painting, super representational, super realistic, I would probably say don't do it. You know, change your idea. Make something more stylized, more graphic, things that you can do easier, faster. Um, it's the yeah. same thing as what I was talking about with this study here. I was saying in the beginning, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to see how I could do this in color. But I put a lot of information down. In the end, it didn't look good because there was just too much to do with too little time. Okay, so adjust your idea. If you are concerned about time, I would adjust your idea. See how you can do it. You know, and if it has to be realistic, you can still adjust the idea. Like for this study, I'm not planning on doing the whole entire background as well. I just plan on doing a hint of the background in a small spot around the character and then everything else will remain blank. Okay, so think about your idea and adjust. Thanks for your question. Mm -hmm. Good to hear from you, CJ. Okay, thanks. You're also, welcome. do you have any advice for skin tones? Because that's one of my weaknesses when I do color skins. Yes. Um, so I would probably need to see what your what your paintings look like right now um but i do i can go over some common things that i find people maybe do uh, common mistakes so one common mistake is that we're treating the painting of somebody's skin the same way that we treat everything else maybe it's plasticky right where you have a nice highlight or something like that i've seen that quite a bit where all the characters look like they're also plastic there's a translucency in our skin a subsurface bit of translucency there um so we need to we need to be aware of that and and um the other the other thing with uh, skin tones, and maybe CJ, you could just mute your mic now. Um, but the other thing with skin tones is that uh, you tend to want to be more sensitive with areas that are just a flat tone. Okay, so areas in your painting that have just a flat tone, a solid flat tone, it's not like you can't, you can definitely have them there and done right, they look beautiful. But I would be more aware of them because with beginner artists, we tend to flatten out big spaces, especially with the extreme values. So look at your extreme values, especially, especially your light value, okay? Your light value on your skin is it blown out? Is it like a big patch of area that's all flat? Because if it is, I would reevaluate that and see uh, how much of that tone do you want, you know, size wise, and then how, at what rate do you want it to dissipate and blend in with everything else? Sometimes you do want a big flat piece of your lightest tone for an image that has a certain look to it as well because now you're messing with the exposure of the image and you're saying that the light it's kind of getting blown out that's why it's gotten so bright that it whites out and now it's a solid color that's a specific effect okay um that you could totally do but i'm just saying 
in the grand scheme of things, in general, what I've seen is the wrong use of that, putting these big patchy uh, areas of flat, brightest tone into an image where it doesn't belong. And I believe uh, CJ asked that down below as well. So I'll just erase that skin tone. Okay, great. Let's go on to another question here. Ramen trash. How could ramen be trash? Ramen's delicious. Ramen trash asks, how to not get bored studying eight times the same drawing? Also, if I have a lot of time, is it better to draw it once each day for a week or eight times on the same day? Okay, really great questions, by the way. Um, first question here, how not to get bored? You find that slice of that job that you really love, and this goes for anything, it's not just studying. And you try to expand that little slice. Say you hate everything about your job, but you like the tree that you sit under for lunch. Expand that part in your mind. Let everything be about that. You know, as you're you know, doing whatever you don't like about your job, think about that lunch. Think about tomorrow's lunch and how wonderful that's going to be. You know, try to expand the parts that you love. Um, do I want to study an image eight times? No, not really. Uh, but I really love knowledge. And that's what I'm after. I'm not after finishing eight studies. I'm after knowledge. And it just so happens the way that I'm getting it is from doing multiple studies. Uh, the other part about this is that... Um, I'm sure we could all pick out things out of our lives that we initially didn't like and we grew to like them or we found a way to like them even better. Find a way to like studying. You know, where is your life going to be? Everybody. Oh, my goodness. Let's just take a little time because I'll do this as well. Let's just take a little time right now and think about where our lives will be if we took studying seriously. If we took uh, going after knowledge seriously, seeking knowledge out, learning it, adopting it. If we did that regularly, not every week, every day, there was a part where we studied and all the days strung together, where would you be in the future? Where would you be 10 years from now? If you did this every day, if you studied this hard every day, in 10 years, you would be a giant, a force to re be reckoned with. You know, like, that's what I see. Even, you know, five years, one year, even one month, even two weeks of studying like this, two weeks, and if you're going by the whole thing of doing at least one study a day, sometimes more, in two weeks, you would have done 14 studies minimal, probably more like 20. That's amazing in two weeks. And you would see, you would feel and see most likely actual differences in what you can paint now and how you paint it versus what you were doing two weeks before. You know, expand that thought in your mind. And here's another thought. What if you did the exact opposite and you didn't draw, you didn't paint, you didn't study, and you did the thing that you usually do to waste time or to relax. However, you're only relaxing. You're not working hard anymore, you know, and you keep doing this. Where would we be in 10 years? I would have lost everything. I would be broke. I would 
have a lot of hardships in my life. That's what I see. I would see put, letting a lot of people down. I would see all this stuff that I wouldn't want in my life. And right now we have the choice. You know, so is it that bad to do a couple of studies? No, not at all. Now, the other part to your question, which I love, is, is it better to draw it once each day for a week or eight times on the same day? It depends on your level of concentration. I think it really depends on your level of concentration if you are heavily concentrated eight times in one day. Let's do it. And then do another eight times or something else the next day. Uh, but if it is, if you feel like you're dragging your butt through the whole entire process, then that's when I would be like, okay, I need to find a good amount of time where I can concentrate. All right. I could check that one off. Um, Anonymous asks, how to prioritize studying courses? When I look through the schoolism courses, I realize that I need the good half of them right now. <laughs> I take three different classes a week. Anonymous. Um, you can take more than one class. And like I said, I do multiple things. There's multiple things on my plate every day. Uh, if you do have a hard time concentrating, then I would bounce back and forth between two classes. If you are good with concentrating, then I would just stick with one class. And whatever that class you pick doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because um, all the classes, it's, it's more about how does that artist approach that subject. So when you're done learning uh, painting with color and light with you know uh, the people at Tonko House. Then I would suggest taking, you know, light fundamentals with Sam Nielsen perhaps after, or designing with color and light with uh, with Nathan Fowkes, because it's all about how do they think about color and light, and what we want to do is we want to gather as many different ways to do the same thing a lot of times a as we can. Because when you're able to have multiple uh, ways to do everything, all of a sudden you have options. If you only have one way to do everything, then you don't have options. You have instructions. This is how I do it. That's it. Can I do it any differently? No. Right? So learn how that particular person uh, really does stuff, really thinks about stuff, practice the heck out of it until you feel like you own it and then move on to another thing what we want to avoid is kind of window shopping oh okay let me watch 10 minutes of this person's video let me watch tw you know 20 minutes of that person's video let me put it on as i draw which is fine but if that's all you did and you never actually sat there and watched it, took notes, tried things out, tried things out again, over and over again until you truly understood it, then that's what I call window shopping. And you don't actually get much accomplished when we're only doing kind of window shopping. By the way, I want to mention that there is a new course on schoolism that I have on my to-do list. I don't know when I'll get to it, but it's definitely on my to-do list, which is um, Victor Kalvachev's new class. It's awesome. Drawing people with Victor Kalvachev. He, his work is phenomenal. Let me see if I could pull some of it up here. But uh, people that know of Victor Kalvachev, oh my gosh dude is a beast um, so brilliantly talented and has like a million different styles a million different uh, techniques all sorts 
here. Let me put this on here. Victor Kalvachev. Okay, so uh, if you like art, definitely suggest following Victor Kalvachev. See some of his studies here. Look at the variety in styles too. It's gorgeous. That's his class, Deconstructed, Drawing People with Victor Kalvachev. If you have a Schoolism um, subscription, it's already added to your Schoolism subscription. If you want to check it out. It's gorgeous stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to stop because I could just go on forever. Yeah. That's that's a class that I'm excited for, especially because I've been getting more and more interested in drawing humans again lately. It's been a while. Maybe we could go back to Discord. Do you have a question on Discord? Hey, Bobby. Hi. Hi. Uh, can I ask you? Or... Yeah, what's your name first? What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Matias Mara. I'm from Argentina. Um, I'm a VFX artist. And Wonderful. First, I want to say thank you for all your videos and all the things that you do. Like uh, when I was just starting, it helped me a lot to just continue and keep on moving and not to fall asleep, you know. <laughs> that was really, really important for me. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And going back to the things that you say, like um, doing something every day so you, you continue and you keep growing and thinking about uh, where would you be if you don't do that. Mm -hmm. There is uh, something that I think about sometimes that is when to know when is too much, you know, because I think I, I feel that I love my work and I think everyone here loves the work too, but I am scared sometimes that um, the love and the, the the work that I do sometimes will absorb most of my time, and that will be not that we will have some uh, issues in the future, not having enough time to enjoy my myself and enjoy the people the people that I love and, and that kind of stuff stuff. So when when do you know when it's too much and you are just uh, focusing too much in your work? It's something that you, I feel like. Uh... I can only talk f from my own experience and from my own experience, it, it's kind of been something that has been an ongoing, uh, an ongoing quest to get to know myself, right? Like what is too much? Last week I mentioned that um, for most people, not all people, most people, they don't know what hard work is. They think that they do, but they really don't because they've never truly experienced it. That's, that's what I would say. And, and I'm saying this in the context of their own lives. Like hard work is working hard to very close to your potential. And sometimes we go over our potential and that's when we hurt ourselves. Um, and for many years, I was, I feel like I was going over my potential. I was overclocking what I could do. And then I had arm problems for like, you know, eight, 10 years, something like that. Um, but it's still something that I found as I was talking with all of these very successful artists, many, many of them um, learned what their potential was by pushing themselves and kind of listening to the, their own bodies, their own minds and everything, um, and trying to figure out what their real potential is. So I feel like that's perhaps that's what you would need to do as well. That's what we all need to do. You know, I'm still constantly trying to figure out what my potential is because all of a sudden, 
say I eat differently, all of a sudden I have different energy, all of a sudden my potential is different again. So it's like um, very basic stuff is, okay, how much time am I spending on drawing and painting? Okay, how much time should I spend to reach close to my potential? That's very basic stuff. Then we can get into more complex stuff where it's like, okay, what things should I do in the morning when I'm more awake uh, and things I should do at night? How will they be different so that I can get closer to my potential? Down to what should I eat? to get closer to my potential because it's true when you start eating different stuff uh maybe it clears the mind maybe it makes the mind more foggy maybe it makes you more tired maybe it doesn't allow you to recover as quickly all of these things you know you don't take in account uh, when i move along to live along i i never i never thought that what to eat and wh when to get up and what to do in the in the morning and all the stuff that you talk about i never thought that would be so important and it would have an impact in in every day along like what you eat what do you do and how how your mindset is is really amazing it really does um i used to now everybody is different okay but uh, there was a point where I was eating sushi all the time, all the time. Um, and then, you know, fish that live pretty long, uh, they collect more mercury. If the, you know, ocean fish, whatever. I'm not a scientist, but I know uh, mercury is a big thing. So I realized I was eating a lot of tuna fish. And I noticed when I stopped eating all that sushi for a good long time, I started to think clearer. And I wasn't as agitated as easily. I wouldn't get as frustrated as easily. Now, I don't know if that totally connects. I don't know. But I do know when you eat different stuff, it, yeah, you feel different. So there you go. My, my perfect day is... Um, I'm eating just a lot of green, leafy greens, right? And uh, very little, very little carbs, carbohydrates, and and just like no fried stuff. I feel like I got energy for days. That's just me. Everybody could be different. Yeah. Uh, thanks yeah, so much for your question, though. Uh, thank you, thank you, and thanks for everything that you do. And it's a great help. Oh well, uh, your words are very encouraging. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. Why don't we go on to a, another question here? And uh, just a little reminder: a little bit under an hour has passed. Okay, where are you now? If you're painting along and you've been focused in on getting that those fingers exactly right, perhaps it's a good time to zoom out or just to take a quick look around, see where the rest of your painting is and see what else needs attention. What other steps do you need to do? Because we only have a little bit over half an hour left. Okay, so Regina asks, uh, hello, I was wondering, how do you create and develop a reliable artistic creative process? Well, you could mess around, keep experimenting, keep experimenting, that helps. Um, you could study how other people do it. You know, there are actual painting techniques, right, with names, the Dutch, Dutch Flemish painting technique, uh, the Zorn color palette and things like that. 
that is where huge amounts of knowledge are huge amounts of experimenting over and over and over distilled into its final result and that's something that we can learn in a fraction of the time that it took to develop it so you know that saying standing on shoulders of giants that's what i feel like i've been trying to do my whole life is just trying to find the next giant and the next giant and learning how they did that learning how they did that and then messing around with it a whole bunch you know experimenting to figure out my own way so it's kind of like those two things right studying how other people do it and i would say that's the majority of my time when I'm studying, studying how other people do it. And then the minority part of my time, that's when I experiment. I mess around, I experiment, I try to um, tie in methods together perhaps, or apply other kind of alternative theories, theories that I might have come up with myself and apply it and you know mix and match and mix them all in now that might sound long you know it might sound like a long process but that long process will be valuable uh, for you as an artist very quickly and then all the knowledge all the information will just build and build and build on top of your skill level on top of your skill sets to make them even more and more valuable. And then towards, you know, you, you look back after a couple of years, um, you would have evolved constantly, constantly, constantly. And what you do is built on a set of foundations, principles, methods that have been tried and true and based off of huge amounts of knowledge. You know, so it might sound like this stuff will take a long time, but the, I'm laying out the journey of the entire career. You will reap rewards uh, quickly. You don't have to get to the end of that to reap your rewards. You reap them on, on the way. Uh, and then you'll be tempted to stop doing these studies, but don't. You know, constantly study, constantly improve, constantly take time to sharpen your samurai sword of uh, art skills. You know, that's the idea. Now you can see here that my face for my subject, it has changed quite a lot. Now, was I aiming to copy her face? Actually, no. And this um kind of aligns with some of the questions that have been asked today which is i'm trying to create my own process i'm trying to create my own style for faces really am i in a rush no though i'm, I'm not in a rush this is something that i want to just consistently do and then later on months from now Perhaps people go, wow, he really can draw faces super good. And only you guys would know how that came about. It wasn't because I'm super talented with painting faces. It's because I'm very consistent. And that's why I welcome all of you to join me for this journey. You know, and we keep doing these studies as long as I can. Um, it's definitely... A lot more time consuming to prepare for these streams and do all this stuff but i'm going to try to do them as long as you guys keep enjoying them um as long as i can do them because this is how i got good at drawing and painting or to the level that i'm at now uh, i just want to kind of shed some light on that because some people they try they try they try and they do not lack in effort but they don't really get much of anywhere because perhaps their logic is somewhat flawed. And they think 
you know, Malcolm Gladwell said 10,000 hours. I spend 10,000 hours on anything and I'll become an expert. But no, it's 10,000 hours of the right effort being put into the right places. That's how you'll, you know, get good at something. Um, yeah. All right. So next question. Is there another question from Discord? Unmute your mic and ask me a question if you want. Otherwise, oh, here we go. Gold Marie? No? Guess not. Okay. We'll go on to a... Okay, here we go. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, I'm Bri, and I'm from Indonesia. Hi, Bri, from Indonesia. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, um, how would you... If, if someone's unmotivated to do art or studies, how would you motivate them to get started? I would kind of like... Um ask them to think about what they want in their lives, not now, but in the future. And a lot of times when we see what, what we can get from doing the right things you know, way in the future, then it makes it worth it again. Sometimes we're just so caught up in um, instant gratification or what will it do for us right now, right? And um, then we put the wrong things in priority. You know, does it really matter? What matters more uh, to us? To feed the social media monster by constantly posting something? Or does it more matter that we're learning something? And by the result of learning something, we have something new to post. You know, so... Uh, that's just like one little example of um, kind of thinking about what are we doing right now uh, and why? What's the benefit? If it's for just instant gratification that won't really help to add value onto our lives, our careers and everything, then I would say try to avoid that, you know, Go after the things that will help your 10-year goal. Now, Bree, I don't know you, but I want to ask you, do you have a 10-year goal? I, I want to get into the video game industry, uh, more specifically character uh, illustration. Okay, but in 10 years from now, I think you can think a lot bigger, a lot more grand. In 10 years, now it's 2030. <laughs> Where do you want to be at this point? What do you want to be doing? Because in 10 years, you can do practically anything when you have a goal that far ahead. Now, I'm assuming that perhaps you haven't put as much thought into that. So I want to give you a little bit of homework, okay, Bree? Think about what your 10-year goal is. Think about it over and over, carefully, constantly reevaluate it. And then when it's time, commit to it. Some kind of goal that you are willing to go after for the next 10 years. What does that do to your decision making as well, right, Bree? You know, you're yeah. going to start to really think about that goal very carefully, thinking about what's worth 10 years of my life to pursue. And let Thank that you. Yeah, let that be the compass for your decisions to guide you in the right directions. Thanks very much for your uh question and uh Hope you stay safe in Indonesia. All Thank right. You. Oh, you're very welcome. So let's go to a 
question here from anonymous question will you ever interview not only successful but also failed artists and by failed i mean people who had to give up their artistic dreams yeah i you know what i've done that as well um And some of those have been the most inspiring. One that comes to mind is one of the people that I mentioned uh, where I saw their stuff on the stream. And it's my friend Mitchell Bernal. Mitchell Bernal. He's awesome. He's, let me try to pull up some info on Mitchell okay this will be cool this will be fun Mitchell Bernal here we go rescuers down under enchanted beauty and the beast Aladdin the Lion King, Fantasia 2000, Lilo and Stitch, Home on the Range, One by One, Tarzan 2. Okay, and they kind of just ended right there, ended with Enchanted. What happened? Well, and here's Mitchell's stuff right here. What happened was that Mitchell um, had arm problems. You know, he. I don't want to speak for him, but from you could check out the interview if you search in my channel as well because it's a very inspiring interview he couldn't draw and paint anymore because of uh health issues like his he had pains or something arm pains back pains i forget exactly what it was but it was this strange kind of situation where if he was to draw lightly that's when the pain would kind of happen um so he, he couldn't draw past two hours a day and if he did do two hours a day then he'd suffer the next you know a couple days something like that Mitchell if you're in the chat definitely uh, speak up love to uh, hear from you very inspiring right took away what us artists find the most valuable is our ability to draw and paint and uh, he couldn't, so he came up with this idea called Skull Animals. Skull Animals is, is an intellectual property that he created. It's cute and creepy. Just my, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just the kind of stuff I love. And then that became these plush toys. It became all sorts of stuff. It became all this merchandise. It ended up in Walmart. It ended up everywhere. And all of a sudden, he became successful again. You know, and then through therapy, physiotherapy and all that stuff, got back in it. And now he's painting and drawing again, just like I was saying. Um, and that's why I was so happy to see Mitchell Bernal back in the house doing his thing it's awesome and there's tons there's tons of um situations like that i could tell you one of mine you know so as my career progressed i'm doing these wonderful projects and then um this little side thing that we have on the side that we just kind of made on the side called schoolism gets bigger and bigger right it starts to create a life of its own and now um perhaps gets to a point where if i'm working on a project if i'm working on a film it doesn't do the company as well than if i just worked on schoolism and that, that's become my reality. But do I still work on projects? Yes, I do. You know why? Because that's why I got into this business in the first place. So sometimes we need to make our little sacrifices here and there. But as long as we have our ultimate goal, 
in mind, that 10-year goal, that 20-year goal, perhaps a lifetime goal, those are extremely powerful. Um, and we keep going down that path. If things do get in the way, we'll still know how to kind of get out of it. We'll still know, okay, we'll be able to identify it very quickly and we'll be able to go, okay, this is not the path. The path should be this way. Um, you know, so like for my example, all of a sudden working on schoolism was more beneficial for the company than drawing and painting a, a, a film, video game, whatever. So then I started to make more and more excuses to do paintings, to do studies, you know, and, and uh, because it was getting harder to do studies, that is another reason why I did this, uh, just started doing these challenges so that I could study with you and have a good reason to keep studying myself. Okay, so let's move on to another question here. That was an interesting question, you know. Interviewing failed artists. I feel like if I interview just failed artists, I don't feel like that would go too well. I feel like I, I would be their kind of Dr. Phil or something or Perhaps they'll say stuff that I just totally don't agree with, and perhaps that's why they have, quote-unquote, failed in their objectives. All right, any other questions? Any other questions from uh, Discord? If not, we'll go on to something else. But I just wanted to mention you have about 20 minutes left. Just about 20 minutes left for this challenge here. Okay, Dan asks on Slido, any advice for self-promotion? I feel, or sorry, I keep up with Instagram, ArtStation. It feels like only the people already following me will ever see my art. How to get more? Really good question. Um, so say... Of course, there's many different ways to get more. You could do something that becomes viral and all of a sudden everybody knows you. How do you do that? I don't know. We could try, 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 and then hopefully we'll get it. We could use hashtags, maybe. You know, maybe people will start to see your stuff because of hashtags. Uh, the easiest, I don't know if it's the easiest way. I'll just tell you how I did it. How I did it was kind of luck but at the same time it makes perfect sense be friendly talk with other people don't just hang out on your own account constantly talk to other people make conversations not just heart smiley face great job nice one follow me check out my page you know meaningful kind of conversations that you're trying to start with people um and that's how you kind of you start the ball going that way you know and then after a point hopefully people are telling other people about you and it just gets bigger and bigger that way uh but that's how that's how i started is because i i was very curious and i um, I would constantly talk to people. Hey, how's it going? Wow, I really like what you did there. Uh, how did you do this part? Or why did you do that part? Or where are you going to be next? How am I going to you know, find you? Um, what events are you going to be at? Things like that. Uh, especially if you're asking them things that they want to talk about. Their newest book. Perhaps you have a question about their newest book. It makes a lot of sense for them to answer you.
All right. Um, but before we go on to another question here, Dan, I want to give one little last tidbit, which is a lot of people that I, a lot of the people that I've met in the past um, were just like me. They tried and tried for a whole year before they gained any traction. Remember in the beginning when I was saying, I'm constantly looking for when people give up because that's when I feel like I'm just starting. That's when we just start our advantage because we're still there when everybody else left, right? And, and, um, and it's funny that I say that because as people know, I'm not a competitive person. I'm a competitive person against myself. I'm always trying to find my potential. Um, so perhaps it's more like, where would you have stopped? And when we go past that point, that is such solid, dense potential for improvement in those, in those hours, in those minutes where we go beyond, beyond our limits, our old limits. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Just wanted to let you know, sometimes, many times, these things will take a lot of patience. Be consistent, be patient, keep going in that direction. Okay. Where are we at with time now? Oh, yeah, we have a question. Oh. Hello. Hey. Um, I talk, I've asked a question a couple of weeks ago, uh, but, um, yeah, I'm Justin. I'm from, uh, Ottawa. Hey, Justin. Um, I remember you. How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing okay. Great. Um, so my question is, uh, with how popular character design is in the industry, like everyone wants to be a character designer nowadays. Um, like I do too, like I love creature design, character design, but like seeing that as that's super competitive, what are some like art careers or art like aspects of uh, for video games or animation or whatever that uh, people don't often think of entering or don't know about like uh, different jobs basically in the industry? Um, yeah, the one ones that I don't think about is like layout where somebody gets the assets that have been created and the layout person plops in the CG camera and does the CG camera move and then that's it. And then does another scene. Uh, that's what I think of when I think about uh, the layout people, right? And I'm sure there's a lot more to it and there's definitely an art to it, but that that's a position where I don't hear anybody going, I really wanna be the person that puts in the camera. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I want to, you know, like you can be a character designer if you want it bad enough. It, you know, um, people told me the exact same thing. It's too competitive. There's so many more people that have more experience than you. What do you, you know, like all of these excuses, um, some of them from people that I respected, uh, some of them from people that were supposed to be my guiding light, you know, so, so think about what you really want and how badly do you want it? If you don't want to put in that kind of effort, that kind of time, and all that other stuff that goes into becoming a sought after character designer, then absolutely don't go for it. You know, and there's no shame in that or anything, but I would leave that option open if it's something that you really want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking because um, like, I love that type of stuff, but, I just love art in general. So I was just wondering, um, 
just uh yeah like layout could would be cool too or like i guess background or like the background artist or whatever i don't know i just don't know how it's broken down like with projects um because i've never worked in the industry yet yeah um, so yeah i just like, don't know a lot of times aspects there are a lot of times you'll you know if you're a character designer you're on a project and it's it's just you you're the only character designer amongst a hundred people and they all do other mm. things you know maybe sometimes there's like two or three of you that are character designers and that's it so if you look at it that way then it could be very daunting it could be like uh i don't know if i could do that um but never let fear this is my own thing this is my own kind of motto okay never let fear uh, guide your decisions mm -hmm. use logic so it could be logical to not go after uh, character design but really think about it because a lot of times fear is disguised as logic in your head and you think oh well it's not that i'm scared it's just not probable you know that's kind of like fear disguised as logic because it's totally probable it happens all the time every year there's more and more character designers that come in and blow up and do all sorts of awesome stuff wicked well that's uh some really good advice thank you very much you're welcome all right well have a great day yeah yeah you too stay safe bye <laughs> All right, great. So we are just about at the 10 minute mark now. 10 minute mark. And look how much you've done in, you know, 80 minutes so far. Awesome. Another thing that we can post. And it's the result of learning. It's the result of effort. So way to go. Now you can see in the bottom uh, right hand corner, there's a hashtag on the screen upload your stuff and hashtag it 90 min art challenge and we'll all be able to find them and when you search up 90 min art challenge you'll be able to see hundreds of other uh, people that are doing these challenges these studies with me uh, so you know shop around say hi because all these people have something in common with you and that last person that was asking how do you start a following how do you get more people to know you well now you have a direct way to contact all sorts of other people that have something in common with you and there's the discord channel as well uh, you can tell people who you are, this and that, and then give them info so that they can find their way back to you on something like your social media. Okay, Anonymous. Wow, this one might be a long one. Anonymous asks, I'm curious about your life story before schoolism. <laughs> How many siblings you have and when did you uh, come to Canada? Okay, I'm not going to give you the life story because obviously that's going to take way too long. But uh, when? How many siblings do I have? I have one older brother. He's two years older. Uh, his name is Ben, my best friend in the world. I love him so much. He is, uh, he is my, I feel like he is the person that believes in me the most in the world. So that's another reason I love the guy. Uh, always been a supporter of what I do. Yeah, and we started the studio together, actually. In the very, 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 very beginning, it was just going to be the two of us to start. Uh, my brother Ben and me and then a month later uh, Kay joined and um, soon after more people joined and so on and so forth and the rest is history when did I come to Canada I came to Canada in 1981 it's a very different place back then 
um, I speak a little Mandarin. It's not too hot. It's not too good. But back then, if there were any Chinese people in my area, it was like none of them spoke Mandarin. So I almost felt like Mandarin was kind of useless until like years later. Now everybody wants to learn Mandarin. It's kind of funny. Um, okay, so that's en enough with that. Federica asks, what's a good and simple way to really study values? I say simple as in not scary to someone who's just starting. Love it. Okay, Federica. So there's many different ways. Um, a good one is when I start a painting, when you start your painting, get out the eyedropper. And if you're studying from something, start eyedropping different parts of that thing, looking at the values that you get, right? First thinking about what do I think that value is? Then I drop it to see how close you were, how right you were, and then I drop another one. I drop another one. I drop um, tones that are very close to each other, very, very close. And how close were they? Exactly. Right? Definitely, I drop tones that are the brightest in the image. How bright do you think that is? How bright do you think the white in the eye is? You know, uh, then I drop the darkest parts and so on and so forth. That's a really good way. Um, and then after that, proceed to paint it. And actually, I would recommend exactly like this. This is totally free. I'm going to leave it up on YouTube. Come back to it. Do these studies. And the best thing of all is that you can see how I'm doing it. And you can follow along. And you could pause. You could rewind. Go step by step right? And learn what's going on in my brain. And when you're done that, find some other brain to study and so on and so forth and keep branching out. So now you have an exact direct way to study values. Okay. You could go through all the different challenges if you like. Um, but this one, especially because it's just in black and white. Okay. How much time do we have? You can see I did talk about the background a bit uh, it, in a previous little discussion in the stream. I was saying the background, there's tons of stuff. I'm not planning on painting the whole entire background. What I am planning on doing is putting little suggestions, little bits of the background and letting it kind of fade out. That's the plan. Um, and that's another awesome benefit that I found from doing these different exercises is getting to know myself more, more and more. What am I capable of doing? And then I'll try to just push that a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Because if I aim too high, then I'll try to do a bunch of stuff and not, not actually get anything done well or right. Right, but if I can really um, allocate my time well, then I can have a better objective. I will have better results, not just in the painting, but in the learning aspect of things as well. You see, I didn't go after the floral kind of pattern on her clothes either because I didn't really care about that as much. I really wanted to go after this idea of um, just tons of light tones and then this sudden shift to accents of dark tones. All right, coming to the final minutes here. Let's try to do a couple more questions. Okay. Um, hi, Bobby. Yes. Hi. Uh, hi. Can you, can you hear me? I can, Gold Marie. How are you? All right. Uh, fine, thanks. <laughs> How are you? 
Great. Okay, so I wanted to ask, I'm, I'm Sofia from Mexico, and I wanted to know um, what can one do to get into a studio as a concept artist? Because, of course, I know that, you know, one has to prepare um, their portfolio and you have to study a lot. But how can you grow enough to get a studio to kind of notice you, a film studio? Yes, I think the, the, I think the best way to go about it. Okay, so one easiest way uh, more, or more simplest instructional way to do it probably the hardest way to get in is make your portfolio submit it try to get in hopefully they will say yes you'll get far more rejections than you get acceptance most likely um the foolproof way is the way that i like you know i kind of pursued which was thinking about getting a job like getting a relationship with somebody that you like you know you, how fast are you trying to go here right and most of us we go we just we want to get right in bed the very first second we're going to hand them our portfolio and say can we move in <laughs> right and move in with you and work on your stuff and play with all your toys uh, which is far more difficult it's still possible but far more difficult The more surefire way is getting the people to get to know you. Um, if I was very methodical, I really, really, my 10-year goal, I don't give a shit. I want to get into this studio, even if it takes me 10 years. How, how would you pursue that? I would probably look up everybody that works in the department that I want to work in that works at that studio. I would start to get to know all of them and I would start to uh, converse with them. Not in a fake way, in a real genuine way of like, I want to, I just want to get to know you more. I'm not wanting anything from you because like I said, I'm thinking about this almost like a relationship. I don't want to ask for stuff. I just want to get to know you. You know, I just want to get a high or something, anything. Um, but I don't want to be aggressive either. And, you know, uh, time, consistency builds trust. So how much time did you put in and how consist consistent are you? And what are you consistent in? Are you consistent in asking for stuff all the time? Or are you consistent in good conversations or good art, uh, showing good effort, a good uh, demeanor, that kind of stuff, right? And I know it might sound like, wow, I don't have that much time. This is for your whole entire career. This is how you would make your career quite bulletproof. And that's how, that's how come, even though You know, I live in Toronto, Canada. I know so many artists now and so many people that work at studios and so many, like the network is vast, right? Because I've never really, I wouldn't say never, I probably did, but I don't remember ever asking anybody for anything. It's always been, um, I'm interested in what you do. I'm interested in your thoughts. I just want to get to know you more. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. And uh, yeah, Have stay safe. All right. Awesome. So we're all done here. Congratulations. If you did the stream with me, you did the challenge with me. Don't forget to upload it and hashtag it 90 minute art challenge. And do me a favor when this stream ends. Maybe you could put in a comment or something. I always see all these comments throughout the chat and everything. And then um, when the stream ends, I publish it. There's no comments because <laughs> it's all in the chat, I guess. But uh, I want to thank you guys, especially everybody that stuck in there with me all the way to the end and did, again, another challenge. 
I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. And um, also, I'll see you guys next week. Next week's image, next week's challenge is a cute little bird. It's a cute little bird. Uh, here is the photo of the bird. You can find the details of next week's challenge in the description of the video, this video below, okay? You could go to that link and hit the reminder button to remind yourself to come back and join for the stream next week, okay? Um, last little thing, I did want to mention, for some reason, a small group of people have um, have accused me of stealing the word art workout or artist workout. Now, first, I would never steal from anybody um, consciously. That's just not me. Uh, second is that we've all heard of art exercises, different art exercises for hundreds of years. We've all seen artists do them for hundreds of years studies and this and that so doing art exercises is not a new idea but thinking about it as an artist workout that's something i've preached and you know talked about throughout so many videos and to have somebody um, accuse me of copying them because their idea is five months old um, is ridiculous. I'm not going to call out the person. I'm not going to point fingers. But I do want to show you this. You know, it stinks that when people accuse you, that sometimes you have to spend time to sh dig out the evidence and show them that, you know, I've been using the term artist workout and thinking about doing these exercises as exercises, as a workout for artists for over 10 years now. But I guess that's the life, that's the world that we live in. When somebody accuses you, sometimes you have to be the person to actually do the work to defend yourself. So if you do hear about people going, yeah, Bobby copied the artist workout or whatever from somebody else, um, you can set them straight if you don't mind. That's the best way to that I could think of to try to clear up uh, the situation. All right, so there you go, everybody. Either way, I had, again, a blast with you guys. I hope you did too, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining me.